Nancy and Charlie came to Boulder when Charlie got a job at NCAR in 1962. Nancy joined NCAR a few months later as a casual employee. They started out working in the armory building. By the late 1960s, they ended up at the new Mesa lab, where Charlie and Nancy worked in the second basement. We used to put bird food out. I could see the birds right outside the window. Right, it was really nice. Oh, it was. I liked it up there. Later, in the 1960s, the Russians were making bold claims about hail suppression, which got Charlie and Nancy into a series of field studies. Nancy collected hail, sliced it in thin sections, and then photographed the sections for later analysis. In 1988, Nancy was looking at a collection of snow crystals taken from the Sabre liner, which is a jet aircraft that was sampling snow over Wisconsin. She noticed that, that in a single collection that there were two snow crystals that were amazingly similar. She, she took a photograph of them and showed it to me. And then, she, and then she wrote it up for the bulletin of the American Meteorological Society. The editor entitled the article, No, no Two Alike, uh, with, with a question mark. And, and he used the picture on the cover of the, of the bulletin. This, this unleashed a, a deluge of publicity on, on Nancy. And, and we were surprised because, because, of course, many snow crystals are, are alike in the sense of being similar. But, but, but this somehow got translated into, into being two identical snow crystals. Another paper of Nancy's looked at the characteristics of hail embryos in different parts of the world. She also worked with an NCAR colleague, Andy Heimsfield, to investigate ice particles in cirrus clouds. This took her to the tropical Pacific in the early 1990s for the TOGACOR and CPEX projects. Hi, this is Carly Kelvin. Nancy and I traveled to Aurora, Nebraska to collect and photograph some of the largest hailstones ever to fall in the United States. And this was quite an adventure. Encouraged younger scientists by making them feel at home at NCAR. She shared her knowledge of hail and hail chasing, mentored a number of students, edited many papers, and helped colleagues in many other ways. Nancy was so bright and funny and irascible. She was completely undaunted by anything I ever heard of. She was the epitome of what I would call the gentlewoman scientist and was a real role model for many women who came after her. Nancy's hail studies took her to Canada, Switzerland, Bulgaria, South Africa, and Italy, in addition to several parts of the United States. Because cold rooms weren't always available, she ended up working in food lockers and ice cream factories and collecting hail from farmers and in Italy, wineries. Though she encountered these inconveniences and sometimes had to work across a language barrier, she found it enjoyable. To go to all these different parts of the world and to, to meet people, that was just wonderful. 